The opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Cable 14, its sponsors or its shareholders, Kojiko Cable, Shaw Cable and Source Cable Limited. Welcome to the December 20th edition of Hamilton Talks. I am Larry Diani. Hamilton Talks is a community affairs program which speaks to prominent Hamiltonians and sometimes Hamiltonians may not be as prominent but are also moving our community forward. And because we are only five days before Christmas, we are going to be speaking this evening on our program to Santa Claus. And Santa Claus had his origins in the fourth century in the person of St. Nicholas of Myra, bishop in the Catholic Church in what is now southern Turkey at the border of Europe and Asia. The persona of Santa was interpreted differently around the world over time. The English had Father Christmas, the Dutch celebrated Sinterklaas, and finally the Americans contributed most to our present day image of Santa Claus, the jolly old elf, who gives toys to deserving boys and girls around the world. The, re the red costume, the portly stature, the ho-ho-hoing have all become staples of a most loved person during the Christmas season. And so we welcome Santa Claus to Hamilton Talks. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, Larry! Well, Santa, it's such a thrill to have you here because, of course, I know how busy you are. Well, this is true. Uh, five days from now, you're going to be whizzing around the world. Me and the reindeer, yes. Rewarding good little boys and girls and not rewarding those of us who may not be uh, on the good list. That's true, Larry, but there are so many of the bad ones. They're mostly good. All right. Well, I'm pleased to hear about that. But listen, we're going to find out all about Santa today, and hopefully that the parents will call the boys and girls to come and watch this program because we are dealing with the real Santa Claus. And I know that I can see from the beard... Uh, and from the flowing hair and from the wonderful costume, uh, that uh, this is the real deal, right? Oh, thank you, Larry. You know, so many people take it upon themselves to dismiss Santa, and uh, I'm just here to, to once again reinforce the fact that Santa is here and he's always in your heart. Well, Santa, that's a good sentiment, but listen, I said in the introduction that the beginnings of the Santa story really trace themselves back to uh, St. Nicholas of Myra in what is now uh, Turkey, I guess. That's right. Uh, tell us about St. Nicholas of Myra. Well, St. Nicholas of Myra was a, a young man that uh, came from uh, a, a very prominent family. And they had wealth. And uh, Nicholas had a tendency of going out and uh, seeing things. And when he saw something that wasn't going quite right, he was... Uh, he would do a gift. He would give gifts to the people to make sure. There's a, there's a story as to there was a gentleman, a poor gentleman, that had three daughters. And the three daughters had to have dowries in order to be able to be married. And if they didn't have the dowries, they would never be married. So uh, St. Nicholas heard of their plight. And uh, one evening went by and filled a sock with gold and threw it over the fence into their courtyard. Thus, they had money, they were able to marry, and everyone was happy. But from that came one of our first and foremost uh, uh, events of Christmas, is the fact is the hanging of stockings. Since Nick, Nick St. Nicholas put the money into the stockings, this was a gifting. Well, and so the, the tradition of giving gifts and hanging our stockings by the chimney with care, we'll get to that in a second as well, uh, began with that tradition of St. Nicholas true. and those three young women. But listen, Santa, there are people watching now that are going to be saying, look, Santa Claus in five days' time has to travel the whole world uh, rewarding people and giving gifts to every boy and girl that deserves it. How can Santa possibly manage that? How can you? I have very fast reindeer, number one. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that, but on the same sides as the fact that I do have a magic watch. Ah, and therefore? Therefore I can slow down time. 
Oh. When I slow down the time, that allows me to advance at a higher speed and able to get my duties done. There you go. And so that's why when I was a kid, it seemed as if the morning would never come. That's it. Because Santa was slowing up time that's so he it, Larry, you could deliver the it. stuff. Uh, well, that, that's a great explanation. But uh, uh, listen, the, I also mentioned in, uh, in our uh, opening that uh, the Americans really uh, perfected the image of Santa. The image, that's true. That's and true. there was a poem that was written in 1822 by a poet by the name of Clement Clark Moore. 1822, mm -hmm. and there's a very famous poem, uh, boys and girls will know that and the yeah, parents will know that, Christmas, called yes. the Twas the Night Before Christmas. That's true. Where Moore painted a picture of, um, of what Santa looked like, and he looked like you, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you. And you brought a, along part of the poem. I did, I Can did indeed. Can you read some of it sure, for us? Sure, sure, not a problem. He was dressed in fur from his head to his foot, his clothes were tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung in on his back, and he looked like a peddler, just opened his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and his beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a reef. He had a broad face, a little round belly, he, that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. Well, there you go, Santa. And the image is completed there, and you did such a nice job. You like that poem, Oh, I, I do. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So um, that was written in, back in 1822. Uh, but, of course, there's also a story where the Coca-Cola company this is true. might have contributed to the image of Santa. How was that? Well, I would think that you, you, you could say that the Coca-Cola com company modernized Santa somewhat. And, and uh, I guess you might say cleaned him up. And uh, with doing that, uh, they became very famous at Christmas time with their Santa. All right, so they were trying to sell their product, obviously, but they were using a very classical image to That's allow true. us to do that. Now, I do know as well, because I go you know, Christmas shopping to the malls, and uh, the department stores have Santas. I understand that there's actually a Santa Hall of Fame this is in the United <laughs> States. Tell us about that. That's right, Larry. In a little place in Indiana called Santa Claus, Indiana, there is a place called the Candy Cane Store. And in the Candy Cane Store is the Santa Claus Hall of Fame, which takes upon itself of giving honorable mention to gentlemen that have portrayed me throughout the years for their communities. And I understand that they meet once a year. All of the folks who portray Santa Claus meet at a convention. This is true. This uh, is how true. many of them show up? Well, last year I think they had 782 of them show up. Wow. And do you, uh, with your magical powers, uh, well, I, observe? I sometimes sneak in. Ah, and do they know that it's you? No, they don't. Isn't because that a hoot? so many of us look the same yeah, no, you that would. they never really know. I could be just Bob from Hamilton. Well, you might be, but you know, Hamilton did have a very famous Santa Claus this is true. by the name of Jimmy Lomax, who yeah. sadly died a couple of years ago. But he left a tremendous legacy for the city. Did you know him? Did Jimmy, you know his work? Jimmy was one of my best elves. Jimmy was probably one of the most unselfless people I have ever known. He was a gentleman of gentlemen, and uh, we sadly, we truly miss Jimmy, especially at this time of year. But Jimmy did, ran Operation Santa Claus, which was a, uh, a charity throughout Hamilton for the uh, uh, poor and uh, 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 institutionalized people uh, for 50 some odd years. 
And over that 50 some odd years, Jimmy was able to generate over $9 million worth of revenue that he gave to the people. Well, you know what, and the, and the community really loved Jimmy Lomax. In fact, uh, we have a picture of him, Santa, uh, and there it is right there uh, of uh, Jimmy Lomax uh, with a little boy um, on his lap and uh, doing what Jimmy always loved best was making young children happy. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something about that picture. Yep. Larry, is that, is that I was fortunate enough, even though it was many years ago, of remembering when that was done, and that was Jimmy's son, Ryan. Oh, was it? That was sitting on his knee. Wow, amazing. And, you know, let me tell you something else, and I couldn't find it. Otherwise, I would have brought it. Uh, my own son, who's now in his early 30s, when he was about seven years old, uh, we were at a function, and uh, he was on Jimmy's lap. That picture was taken by the spectator. Oh, very and good. And it was put prominently on the pages of the newspaper. And this is, uh, as I said, about 23, 24 years ago. Uh, and we have it at home somewhere. I just mm -hmm. wasn't able to find it. That must be a real, real collector's item now. You know what? Uh, tremendously so. And Paul really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have another picture. Speaking of pictures, Santa. And this is actually, if I can get maybe our camera to uh, zoom in on this one, and I'm not sure which camera will do that, uh, but if they can zoom in on, there we go. Uh, if you can see this one, it's actually you, Santa, uh, with a slightly older um, person on your lap. Who is this? Oh, that's Mrs. Claus, Larry. <laughs> I get in trouble if there is somebody else sitting on my right, lap this, like Right, so this is Mrs. <laughs> Claus who helps you out, oh, doesn't oh. she? Larry, she's, you could say she's my right hand man, but actually she's, she's my right and left hand. Oh, the, the toys wouldn't be made unless she was there to, to oversee the elves and make sure that everything was on track. Keeping me on my schedule, which is another thing altogether, Larry, she's, she's indispensable. Well, Santa, let me ask you a question, and I don't know uh, whether, you know, this gives you some concern, but um, Santa Claus at its core is a religious festival, That's isn't true. it? Yes. I mean, we commemorate uh, the birth of birth Christ, of Christ. Uh, even with St. Nicholas of Myra, it traces back to the mm -hmm. Christian tradition, uh, but it's also become a very secular holiday, uh, celebrated by people of all faiths. Mm -hmm. And that's nice mm -hmm. as well. We want everybody to be able that's to celebrate right. Christmas. But does it concern you that sometimes it might be all about the presence and not about what's in our heart in terms of generosity? I, I, at times, yes, yes. We always have the, 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 the age-old uh, answer as to with children. It's always, Santa, I want, I want, I want. But you know as, all, as well as I do is the fact is that we're all young once and we all have our, our, our high hopes for what we might like. I guess it's a, a matter of us educating our children as to what Christmas really is. That it's just not gifts. Like you said, that there is a religious content to it. There is the thing of Christ's birth. And, and these are things that should not be forgotten and that we should remember. And of course, for people of other religions who also enjoy the Christmas tradition, uh, remembering the tenets of their own religion during this time uh, is all, would also be mm -hmm. advisable. And that's a great message to send to children. Yeah. Uh, not that toys aren't fun. We all like oh. toys, Santa. Oh, uh, I think we even have some older boys here that like the toys, Larry. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, now I know for a fact that you're up on the latest technology, Santa. This is true. And you spent some of your time Skyping with children. Tell us about that. This year, we have <laughs> been able to work with some people out of Toronto, the Toronto Eaton Centre, and they have set up a Skype board, which I'm able to access from the North Pole. And by doing that, the, the people can turn around and uh, go to the uh, Eaton Centre uh, web page and access Skype with Santa and make an appointment to talk with me. And people do that. And what do children say to you, Santa? Do they give you a list of things that they'd they like? Usually they'll tell me what they like and that. <clears throat> usually once they, they sit down and talk with me, Larry, they have a tendency of forgetting what they wanted in the first place. Really? Yes. Uh, d yes. D now some children, my own grandchildren, I have a, 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 a five-year-old, she just turned five, 
and I'm hoping that this won't be the case this year, but up until this year, we've had a, a tough time bringing her to Santa. She gets intimidated and <laughs> yeah, scared. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I have a two-year-old as well who sort of wonders who this person is. How do you deal with children who might be squirming? And Well, there, there's, there's one big trick, and that's the fact is that for a number of years, how many, what do parents tell their children? Yeah, stay away from strangers. Stay away from strangers. Well, does anything look stranger than me at this time <laughs> of the year? Come on. So anyhow, it's just a matter of letting the child warm up to Santa. S let Santa talk to them for a little bit. Don't throw the child into Santa's lap and say, here, Santa, let's have a picture, and the baby starts crying or whatever. That's, we don't want to terrorize the child. You know, Santa, Santa wants to be loved. He doesn't right. want to be found to be, uh, you know, disliked or hated or, 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 or uh, uh, shy, you know, have the ch children shy away from him. So a lot of the times it's just a matter of the children warming up to Rather him. than pushing the child towards Santa, let the child this walk right. towards That's it. Keep right, distance. Right. They can keep and, a distance. Right. That. Sometimes in those pictures, I have to have mom sit with me. Ah. So mom will come and sit with the, the child and everything's fine. And Mrs. Claus, of course, oh, approves of that. Oh, under those circumstances there, yes, <laughs> Mrs. Claus is, allows All me right. to do that. So a child comes and has a list of things that they want. Right. How do you decide what to bring the child? Well, the elves and I are quite good at this now. So we go over the list, and we try to make sure that the, the, the toy that the child is after is within their age group and will be able to do, I've had a lot of children sit there and ask me for iPads and iPhones this year. Meanwhile, they really don't understand what they're for. So then I'll look at them and say, well, maybe Santa might bring you some surprises instead. And at that point of time, the elves and I go to work and try to figure out something that exactly might be a little what bit it better. Is. Yes. Yeah. Do, do you ever consult? I mean, is there a way of consulting with parents sometimes on oh, that? Sometimes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. If I had the opportunity, you would do I that. do, yes, yes. So what's, what, what are the hot items you're being asked about? iPhones oh, and iPads? Well, iPads, iPads, Lego. Lego really? is still a big one on the market. That's yes, kind of a yes. traditional and, iconic toy. And that toy. is great because of the fact that that's a, a real creative toy. And how about older folks, like in my category? Well, what are they you know, I, 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 I hate Listen, to tie I'm this, tired but of ties. The, the, the Jaguar has to go back. <laughs> as long as I don't get... No, actually, I love ties as well, <laughs> in case any of my Well, I could always watching. bring you socks and underwear. <laughs> you know, that's a useful thing as well. <laughs> Santa, to be serious for a second, you know the, you know the city of Hamilton. Right. We have our challenges. It's a wonderful community. Uh, we have our challenges with poverty mm -hmm. as well. Um, do you care about that issue? I, oh, I'm I sure care, you do. care about it tremendously. And, and one thing I can say about the city of Hamilton is, is the fact, Larry, is the fact is that they are truly a giving community. I am so happy to see that there are so many people out there taking the time to make sure that others don't go without. And, and all I can really say is that thank you, Hamilton, and thank you for those people because of the fact that means a lot. Well, and you know that the media really gets on board with this. Uh, uh, various radio stations have Christmas Trees of Hope and Christmas Miracle Projects. Uh, uh, clubs and associations uh, do their part mm -hmm. in terms of mm -hmm. uh, uh, providing for those who may not have. I know schools that are collecting money for needy folks. I know churches right. are doing the same. I know that some agencies in the community are also feeding people during Christmas time because it's got to be most oh, lonely it is. Uh, yeah. when people don't have family around them, I, right? I think probably that is the, the worst part of uh, within a community is the fact is that if you aren't able to share and loneliness is probably the worst or the, the, the uh, worst enemy we have and if there's some way of, of people being able to uh, invite somebody in or participate in one way or another to make sure that people are looked after. All I can say is kudos to them. Like I, I'm so very proud to see that that's, that's basically Christmas as far as I'm concerned. It is. Santa, you work uh, during a period of time when most of us are enjoying ourselves, relaxing, eating and overeating, <laughs> uh, maybe drinking a little bit, eggnog and 
and so on, hopefully responsibly. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to work. I mean, you're, oh, you're busy Skyping, you're busy preparing, you're busy delivering. Uh, right up until uh, you know um, the uh, the uh, Christmas. Yeah. So when do you relax? Well, as of Boxing Day is when I really get to relax because of that. Coming off the big trip on December the 24th, like I'm coming in in the wee hours of the morning, and Mrs. Claus has a nice nice warm cup of cocoa there for me, and my slippers and my big comfy chair. And uh, I have no problem of parking myself there, Larry, for a good three, maybe four hours before I even start doing anything else. But from that there on, I, uh, basically the month of January, I'm able to kick is back. Your, is and, your and, month yeah. to relax? Because mm -hmm. just that, when I get into February, we start all over again. Yes, you would have to for the next year, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. So, Santa, if people want to get a hold of you, um, how might they do that, other than the... Other than the, um, other than the uh, uh, North Pole address that mm -hmm. most of us mm -hmm. know, if they want to get hold of you, how do they do that? Well, I guess the only way at this point in time would be, be via the Skype because of the fact I, I do have a, a world cell phone, but uh, I don't give that number out because of the fact that it's only, only for communication with one person and one person only. That's Mrs. Claus because she always has has the last word. Right, and I have a, an email address here, um, all one word, Santa Canada at live.com. Yes, you can reach S me there also. Yes. Santa Canada at live.com if you want to talk to Santa, send an email to, to Santa if you have a special request of some sort, uh, Santa Canada at live.com. Well, Santa, Listen, I, before we, we see a little video, um, which is kind of a cute Santa song, and we're going to uh, see ourselves out, uh, can you give our community and our viewers a Christmas message? We certainly can. And, and it's the one you've heard so many times before, and that's the fact is that I would just wish that everybody can get along, that we can have peace and prosperity for the coming years, and that you always look after one another. It's very important, and especially at this time of the year. So peace on good earth and goodwill to men, Larry. Well, Santa, that's, that's a great uh, message that we've heard over the ages for sure. And uh, we really appreciate it, especially coming directly from you to our Hamilton Talks viewers on Cable 14. Uh, Santa, what am I getting for Christmas? <laughs> Larry, that's say. always a surprise. You know that. <laughs> well, I must say that uh, I've been well treated by you over the many, many years. You must be tired of saying, enough for this guy. Let's give to some other folks. Oh, there's never enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's great to hear as well. Santa, thank you for coming on Hamilton Talks, and Merry Christmas Merry to you Christmas as well. Merry Christmas to you, Larry. And all the best in 2013. Thank you. And I'm going to wish the same to our viewers, uh, that they have a tremendous Christmas, a responsible Christmas. Enjoy yourselves. And uh, also a prosperous 2013. And we'll see you in the new year. In the meantime, we are going to watch a little YouTube uh, called The Santa Claus Song, produced by Kids TV 123. And it's on YouTube. Kids TV 123 on YouTube. And uh, Santa, I think you'll enjoy these. Please roll. Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, we all love you, Santa Claus. With your bright red suit and your long white beard, your fluffy hat that covers your ears, Santa Claus, you're the best. Carry your presents in a sack and you put them under the tree Hope you bring one for me Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus We all love you, Santa Claus